Okay, so today we're going to be building a tensegrity table, and it will look something like this when you're finished. Really interesting project. It looks as though it's kind of floating, and it illustrates a physics concept called tensegrity. You can look it up online, you can read a lot about it, there's lots of project tutorials, uh, all different kinds of really cool projects, but this will be the tensegrity kit that we're building today. All right, so in your kits, you should have received some fishing line pieces with crimped beads on the ends. There should have been four long ones and two short ones. So go ahead and separate those. Put the long ones in a pile and the short ones in a pile. Okay. The short ones are about half as long as the long ones. Go ahead and push those to the side, keep them in their piles and push them off to the side. Okay, now we're gonna focus on our triangles. So we have these triangles and these sticks that will be coming out of, we'll call them props that come out of the triangles. So you'll have two of these and two of the props. And what's kind of fun is, is that before you build it to decorate them, you can color them, you can paint them, you can draw on them any way you want. It is yours, but I think it's really cool to have your own design on your tensegrity table. So once you have colored them, you're going to need to glue the props into the slots on the triangles. Now, something you're gonna to wanna to consider is, you may want to decorate both sides. We only decorated one side, but one side is going to be the bottom. The other side is going to be the top. So one prop will be coming up from the design. Go ahead and put it in there. Actually, before you put it in, you want to get a little bit of Elmer's glue, just a dab. And you're going to want to put it on the tab of the prop. Like this the edge there where it connects with the slot on the triangle. You don't need much, just a dab. Okay, good, yep, that's plenty. Good, yep. All right, now you're going to insert the prop facing towards the middle. So once again, the prop, go ahead, will go towards the middle like this. Okay, good. Now you're gonna take the other one. You're gonna do the same thing, but this one's going to be coming from the bottom. So you'll have two tops because you don't really see the bottom too much. You're gonna make sure that the prop, go ahead and glue this one too. You don't need much, just on the tabs. Mm -hmm. Not much. Once again, you're going to want to make sure that the prop comes up from the side you didn't paint or draw on, or though you could draw on both the tops and the bottoms. Make sure it is sticking out towards the middle, and you want to make sure it's nice and snug in the slot. It's nice and flat. You might want to take something and kind of smooth the glue out. Maybe just take your fingernail and kind of smooth the little globs of glue out so it gives you a nice smooth bead whenever you are finished. Just like that, you wanna make sure it's nice and flush with the slot in the triangle. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is let that sit for I would say at least two to three hours until it's completely dry. Don't go ahead until it's completely dry. Okay, so now that the glue has dried on your tensegrity tops and bottoms, we are going to begin assembling the kits using the fishing line with crimped beads on them. Now, like I said, at the first part, you're gonna have four long ones and two short ones. Now, you don't need all four of them. I gave an extra one just in case one slips or is missized. You can always swap one out. And then for the short ones, which is where a lot of the tension happens, if uh, one of them breaks or, or the, the crimp bead pulls off, you have a spare. So what you'll also see is that on the props that we glued in, there is a slot. And you'll also see on the tops and bottoms, there is a slot 
for the fishing line to be slid in and the crimp bead to pull on. So that is what we're gonna be using to attach the fishing line and crimp beads. Okay, so we start with the short fishing line with crimp beads. And um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it, and whenever you do this, you always try to be very gentle. None of this should ever be pulled too hard. It could possibly break the prop. It, it could pull your bead, so you're always being very gentle. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna slot the fishing line into that. Now pull down until the bead is pulling against the side like this. Okay, so now that we have it slotted into one half of the tensegrity table, we're going to get the other piece and we're going to um, keep a little bit of tension on that short piece of fishing line and you're going to slot the fishing line into the other prop from the other half of the table, just like that. Now, what keeps this together is a constant tension pulling down, but don't pull down very hard, just very lightly, just enough to keep it just slightly taut. Now you're gonna wanna go ahead and make the top and the bottom parallel like this, okay? And notice how we have the props from the tops and the bottoms um, at angles to each other. They're not lined up, they're at angles. So what you see is from the top, the triangles are lined up like this. From the side, the props are at an angle to each other. That gives it a really nice effect when you finish assembling it. So now comes the tricky part. What you're gonna need to do is take the long ones and you're going to have to put them in one at a time, and that's what gives this whole structure stability. So this is the part that you may need a little bit of help. So I'm gonna help out here. I'm gonna hold the table. And what I do is the person who's helping just holds the top and pushes down just slightly to hold it still for the person putting the long string in. So once again, you slide that in. If it gets stuck, just kind of pull it in as best you can until it's nice and aligned with the uh, top of the table. You're gonna add tension to it and you're gonna go down to the bottom, keeping tension on it, just like this. And it's nice to kind of have the edge, um, the tip of the triangle hanging off the edge of the table and that gives you a little bit of room to slide that bead in. So go ahead and rotate the table, rotate the table. I'm gonna continue to add a little tension so that it stays nice and still while the person putting the long uprights in are doing it. So once again, I'm trying to make it flat uh, parallel to each other and we're gonna slot that line in like this if it gets stuck kind of work the line the fishing line back and forth kind of like you're flossing okay so as the person is um, holding the table the other person is trying to work that line into the slot on the triangle once again if it's kind of hard to get in you want to work it back and forth. There you go. Don't pull too hard. Neither person should pull too hard, either on the, the tension line or on the table. So here we have that corner, this corner, and now it looks like this. There's still, if I, I can actually give each side a little bit of slack. But what we're going to do is, is that last one, we're going to kind of pull towards that last tip, keeping the tension on the outside lines. Go ahead and rotate it. Again, having the tip off the edge really helps a lot. Oh, one of our one of our lines popped out, and this will happen, right? So go ahead and put that back in now um, until you get it kind of settled into its final position. Some the lines might pop out. Um, as you can see there, what we did is we dragged it over the edge of the table, which pulled the the bead out. So once again, you got to be really gentle putting just a little bit of tension on there for the person. Now this is the one that's gonna make it a little, actually a lot more solid. This is the one that really brings it into its structure. So once again, if you have trouble, floss it in, pull that bead in from the bottom, pulling up and adding tension. You're gonna take the other line. This is the tricky one now. This is the one that, that makes the final structure. Go ahead and do your best to slot that in. Push the bead as far back into that slot as you can. And that gives the entire table tension so 
to the point now where you have a finished tensegrity table. You can hold it to the side and it has tension. Look at that. And then there is your designs, top and bottom. We had the short line here. Remember, we put that in first and we put tension down so that the person could slot in the line at each corner. And then it's not till that very final piece of, sh of fishing line is put in does it become uh, a nice stable structure like this. And once again, remember, don't push too hard, don't pull too hard, and uh, be really careful about pulling those fishing lines in to the corners so that you don't um, pull the crimp beads off of the fishing line. And if you do, you've got a spare long and a spare short. So there it is, the 10 segregate table.